Hi folks, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to keep track of sick pay, vacation pay, and time off pay in QuickBooks Online Payroll. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the payroll section here, and then I'm gonna click on employees, and I just wanna look at the last pay stub for the employee so we can kinda of see what this looks like or what this might look like from the employee's perspective, which is probably the most important one. So I'll click on one of these employees here. I'll click on paycheck list. And then we'll look at the only uh, pay stub we have here for the year. I'll go ahead and click on the net pay so I can look at the pay stub in itself. And we're going to scroll down and see the part about vacation pay. So notice that right here, we got time off, vacation time, and pay time off, hours accrued, hours used, hours available. So what we're going to talk about is how to track that stuff, th those numbers, that are there. Let me look at the other employee that we have here. Let's see if he's got any. I'll open up Hector here and we're going to go to paycheck list, open up that particular paycheck and see what his pay stub looks like. Uh, his doesn't have any. So we'll start with him who's got absolutely no hours accrued or anything like that. So I'm going to click OK. And the first thing I have to do is I have to set up this employee to accrue for that pay time off. So I'm going to click on employee details and then here where it says pay, I'm going to click on the little pencil so we can go edit uh, Hector Gonzalez's pay. Uh, we'll click on that, and then we're going to scroll down to where it says, um, how much do you pay Hector? Uh, there should be uh, somewhere here where it keeps track of uh, overtime or uh, hourly pay, all this stuff. We're going to click here where it says, add additional pay. So I'm going to click there, add additional pay, and then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to enable whichever time off I'm going to do. So if I'm going to do pay time off, uh, on pay time off, sick pay, vacation pay, holiday pay, how, whatever your policy looks like. Uh, some companies, what they usually do is they will have um, sick pay and vacation pay as two separate buckets. Other companies combine pay time off into a single bucket. So for this example, let's assume that we track both uh, sick pay and vacation pay. So we're going to enable sick pay and we're going to enable vacation pay. Then the next question is, uh, what does the policy look like? How often do you accrue vacation pay or sick pay per employee? So let's say that for sick pay, uh, you accrue, let's say, approximately eight hours or a day per month. Approximately, let's just call it that. Uh, so that means that every two paychecks in the every other week type of paycheck scenario or a half of the month, end of the month paycheck scenario, every time you have a paycheck, for two weeks, you're going to accrue, let's say, four hours per paycheck. So if there is, uh, if we pay every other paycheck, we're going to have a total of approximately, or exactly 26 paychecks per month, uh, which means that uh, if it's four per paycheck, that would be 26 times four. So we'll just crank up the calculator here and do uh, 26 times four, again, 26 pay periods times four hours, that gives me a total of 104 hours per year. So we come in here and we always do it per year. Now, maximum allowed is how many are you allowed to bucket or keep until you can no longer accrue or use your vacation, uh, or in this case, your sick hours. So let's say the maximum we're allowed to do, it's a year's worth. So we'll put 106 as a maximum you can accrue. Now, let's say, for example, if you, if you are forced to take that vacation pay or that sick pay through the year, maybe you want to cut that in half or whatever. That way the system doesn't accrue for the, that sick pay anymore. It's pretty much how it works. So this is based on your policy. You're going to create your own company policy. You can't make these things up in the spot. This has to be agreed upon with all the employees, but you're going to translate that information into QuickBooks. So let's say the vacation pay is a different scenario. You don't accrue it per paycheck. You accrue it per year. So we're going to come in here and put at the beginning of the year, and let's say that we give people two weeks uh, worth of vacation per year, and then they, they, they accrue it at the beginning of the year. So two weeks would be uh, 80 hours. And then let's say the maximum we're allowed to, to bucket or save uh, is uh, two years worth. So we'll put there 160. And the way basically that works is at the beginning of each year, you'll accrue your 80 um, and then if you don't use any that year, uh, the next year you accrue 80 again, but then you can't accrue anymore. So you got maximum 
two years or four weeks worth, you can you can bucket or save for later usage. So that's the, the usefulness of using the hours earned per year and also the maximum allowed. So in this case, look, you're allowed to be sick more often than uh, that, that your vacation time. And that could happen. It depends really on the, on the policy. If you were to combine the two and you have one pay time off policy, then what you would use the pay time off option, the one up here, and you will create your pay time off, your combined pay time off for that. Now, some people track holiday pay. You can track holiday pay. You can put a checkbox on holiday pay, but you usually don't track it because everybody gets the holiday off. Basically, that's what it means. So you can track that, but you don't get the hours and the accrual. And then you have unpaid time off, which you can accrue. And the purpose for that is to make sure that people are maybe not off for more than a certain period of time based on uh, company policy. So that's really what, the, what that unpaid time off could be for. I usually don't, don't use it. So we got these two. Then the next one uh, that we want to put, let me hit OK here and OK here, is the current balance. So let's say as of now, what do I want to see in that pay stub? Let's say for the vacation pay, we want to see 80. That's the starting point. And let's say for sick pay, this person has accrued four for the year. So you probably have a control of this in a spreadsheet somewhere or something like that because you haven't been using it with QuickBooks yet. So by coming in here, setting it up and entering the current, that's what you're going to see in the pay stub. So I'm going to click on done. And then I'm going to go back, click on done. And then I'm going to go back and look at uh, Hector's last paycheck. I'm going to open up the, uh, his pay stub, open up the last pay stub that we have. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to see that now this has been uh, activated, but because on the last paycheck that was created, uh, you um, didn't have that yet. So it's going to show up on the next uh, upcoming paycheck. So let's do the next paycheck here. Let's run payroll. I'm going to go to payroll. Uh, just click on payroll there. And then I'm going to click on run payroll. And let's just run a payroll for the next period for both of these people. Let me just push the next pay period forward here and the paycheck date. And then we're going to click on preview payroll just so we can kind of see what that looks like. And then we're going to click on submit payroll. So I just submit a payroll like normal. Uh, and I just want you, to, I want you to see how we accrue that time. So I click on finish payroll and we're going to open up now the pay stops. So let's go to employees. Let's go to Hector here. Let's go to paycheck list and let's click on his uh, other uh, paycheck that I just created. And let's see what that looks like now. So notice he now has some four hours of sick pay accrued and 80 hours of vacation pay for the whole year. So I'm going to go ahead and create another paycheck. Now I'm going to consume some of it so you can kind of see what that looks like. So I'm going to go to payroll, employees. Let's go to run payroll. Now what I'll do, I'm just going to click on create another check for Hector. In this case, because I'm rubbing up against the same uh, period, go to create another check. Uh, and then in here, instead of paying him 40 hours of regular, I'm going to pay him, let's say 20 hours of regular. And I'm going to pay him, let's say 12 hours of sick and eight hours of vacation. So that's, I kind of want you to see kind of what happens um, when we consume 12 hours of sick pay and eight hours of vacation. Click on preview payroll, submit payroll. And now I'm going to uh, finish the payroll. I'm going to go to see his uh, pay stop. So let me go into Hector here, paycheck list. And then I'm going to look at the latest uh, pay stop to see what that looks like. And we get to see the new calculation. So look, in this case, I only had four hours of sick pay accrued and I consumed 12. Obviously, that went to negative. There's no control mechanism to have QuickBooks stop you from doing that. So you kind of want to check the balance of the employees accrued sick and vacation prior to generating the, the, the payroll to make sure that you don't do this where you run into negative hours. And actually, the best way to do that is to run a report. So let's go into uh, reports. Let me get out of all these screens. And we're going to go into uh, reports here on the left-hand side. Click on reports. And then we're going to search uh, sick vacation and sick leave. That's the name of the report, vacation and sick leave. You click on that. And you're going to get a list of all your employees and all of their accrued vacation and sick leave. I can select across 
uh, all employees and active employees, active employees, a specific employee if I want to give the employee the list or whatever. And then I can click on run report. So once we do that, uh, I'm going to just collapse the left navigation bar here so we can see more and you can get to see clearly. So we get to see what each of their vacation policy is, what their PTO or pay time off uh, sick time uh, policy is, and what the current available versus, in this case, um, used, you know, used, it would be policy accrued main, minus use would be the current available. If I click on any of those dollar amounts there, if I click on that, it will take me to the specific report that shows me all of the pay, paychecks or the pay stops, rather, that will basically let me know when is each event that has caused that those hours to either accrue or to be used. So that's it. That's how you track vacation, paid, time off, and sick pay in QuickBooks Online Payroll. I hope you like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.